In this example, we have a report demo app that allows users to open the orders page and view it on an invoice form. We would also like to add the ability for users to print this invoice form to a PDF file. Let's learn how to do that. Let's create a project called Report Demo. We'll connect to our Northwind database. Which has ASP.NET membership enabled. Let's set up several models, starting with orders, sorting by order date descending. We'll add a order total calculated field. which will sum the unit price quantity and the inverse of the discount from all the order details for this order and add the freight. We'll want to specify a format of C for currency. If we give it a try under the data tab, this will double check that our order total field works. Next, let's add the suggested database entities. Starting with customers, we'll put company name field first and sort in ascending order of company name. Employees, sorting in ascending order of last name. And we'll add shippers, sorting in ascending order of company name. Next, we'll add details for our order. We'll sort by product name in ascending order. And we'll add the additional suggestions from order details, starting with categories, sorting by category name, products sorted by product name, and suppliers, sorting by company name. Let's proceed to open the project designer. First, Let's copy order details on orders to create a detail view. And we'll bind this data view field onto the edit form of orders. Let's place it above the shipped date field. Let's see what our app looks like. If we jump to the orders page and select an order, we can see that we have a list of order details associated with the order presented halfway down on the edit form. Next, we'll want to add an action on this edit form that allows the user to print a report of this order, including order details. Our first step will be to create a custom controller based on order details and include any extra fields that we'll want in our report. Open the model builder.
and let's add another model for order details. We'll change the name to invoice report. For orders, let's go ahead and include all non-foreign key fields. For the employee of the order, let's include first name and title. For the order shipper, we'll include the phone. And finally, the product supplier, let's include the country. This should be enough fields that we'll want to display on our report that describe the order and each order detail. Let's go ahead and press finish and open the project designer. Notice that an invoice report page has been added to our sitemap. We won't be needing it in the sitemap, so let's exclude it. Should we need to debug it, we'll still be able to access this page via the URL. Let's add a new action on orders in action group AG2. It'll have the command report of type PDF. We'll set the header text to invoice. And we'll specify the data property, which will allow us to define which controller this report will come from, which will be invoice report. And we'll set the view to edit form one. We'll provide the default sort expression of order ID. Finally, we'll make sure that the order ID is passed as a filter to filter the field order ID on invoice report. We'll only show this command when the last command was select. And when a key is selected, Let's add a custom icon. Save the action. Let's check out our custom action. When we select an order, we can see our custom invoice action. If we activate it, This will print off a report. We can see that report will print a page for every order detail that's associated with this order. We'll want to customize our invoice report to start looking a little bit more like our standard orders edit form. The app framework will create a standard report with the fields in a top-down presentation. Instead, we'll want to define a custom report and modify it using Visual Studio Report Designer. In the Project Designer, let's select Invoice Report, Edit Form 1, and we'll enable the checkbox next to Create Custom Report Template. Save and regenerate the project. When complete, let's open the project in Visual Studio. We can now find our custom report under the Reports folder. If the report file opens as an XML file, 
Then you'll need to install the Report Designer for the version of Visual Studio that you're using. Links have been provided at the top of the file in a comment. When opening the RDLC file, we can see our report template that's been generated automatically, which gives us a top-down list of fields. First, let's clear the table that's in the middle. Let's remove the filter details. And let's modify the title. Under the Report Data Control, let's drop Order ID into the title. Save the file, and let's try to print the invoice again. We can now see that the top of the file says Invoice and the order ID of the invoice. It also shows some details in the bottom left and bottom right of the page. Let's go ahead and add some report information at the top of the page. We can modify the size of individual fields. And let's see what our report looks like now. We can see we have the customer ID and the order date of the order. Next, we'll want to drop in a table that will list our order details. In the toolbox, Let's grab table and drop it in. We'll want to specify the first column to be the product name. We'll specify the second column as unit price. The third as quantity. The fourth is discount. Let's add a fifth column. In this case, we'll specify an expression and calculate the total price for that row. We'll grab the unit price, multiply it by the quantity, and the inverse of the discount. And we'll provide the label total price. Let's size our table and check it out. We can now see we have our table that lists each row that's contained in order details. Let's continue to make some customizations to make our report look nice to the end user.
Let's go ahead and try our customizer report out. While there's still always more customizations to be made, this is a good start for a template for our custom invoice report. You can find more details on how to customize our DLC reports and the Visual Studio documentation.